Before starting to make our sleeves, let's review those features we want. A well-made sleeve has a smooth, rounded cap with no tucks or gathers. The ease in the under part of the sleeve, as well as in the cap area, uh, gives us a nice armhole line that is straight. The crosswise grain is parallel to the floor, and the lengthwise grain is straight up and down with no wrinkles. Let's get those features into our sleeve. Before removing your pattern, be sure that you have transferred this important mark at the top of the sleeve to your fabric. You may have done that as you cut out your sleeve by cutting a notch, or you may have used carbon. If not, be sure to use the carbon now before taking the pattern off. The first step is to put a row of E-stitches at the seam line on the cap of the sleeve. Before I actually put these E-stitches in, let me explain what we mean by E-stitch and why we use them. And to do this, I'll compare them to stay stitching and gathering stitches, with which you're already familiar. Stay stitching is a regular length stitch put in at the seam lines to hold the threads of the fabric in place during construction. Gathering stitches are lengthened stitches, usually two rows, which we use to pull up the fabric to form gathers. Ease stitches, which will be used at the cap of the sleeve, are a little shorter than gathering, but a little longer than the regular stitch. They are used to shape an area especially one where we do not want gathers to appear. For many years, we have put the E-stitch in only over the cap of the sleeve from notch to notch. The experience has shown us that ease under the sleeve will give us a more comfortable fit. So, put your needle down at the point where the seam lines cross. Many of you will notice that your pattern tells you to put e-stitching in at this point. One row of e-stitching is all some of you will need to make. But I find I do a quicker and smoother job if I put a second row in between the seam line and the edge. Now those two rows of stitching will be pulled up later to form the cap of the sleeve. But I won't do that until I start to set my sleeve into the armhole. The next thing we do is join this underarm seam. Bring the right sides together to make the seam. Here is one place I like to finish the edge of the seam, whether the fabric ravels or not. For on a raw, on a short sleeve rather, the uh, seam is often in a position where it is seen while it's being worn. And a neat seam finish here is one where we turn the edge under 
and stitch it. Some of you will be using solid colored fabric and you don't want to make sleeves for the same armhole. Here's an easy method to get sleeves that you'll have a right and a left. Here are two sleeves with the E stitching in and up to this point they're identical. Fold the sleeves so that you have a single notch on top And so that the seams are together. Then pin the seams. And after you've stitched them, you'll have a sleeve for each armhole. Now in order to finish this unit, before we join it to the large unit, I'll make the cuffs and join them to the sleeves. At this point, you'll notice a similarity between the cuffs and the collar. And the procedure will be about the same also. I'm making the outside of my cuff of a solid color. So we'll place these out here and lay the two notches together, just as we did for the sleeve. Then place an interfacing on the wrong side of those sections of the cuff. Pin them together and start stitching from the center to each end. Go back to the center and overlap your stitches. Your fabric should be held just a little away from your guide. We do this because we want this row of stitching outside the seam line. We join this cuff by matching the notches and stitching right on the seam line. Now that's an easy step, and I don't think I need to demonstrate that for you. So here is the cuff already stitched, the interfacing trimmed off down to the stitching line, and the seam itself trimmed off and pressed open. Here's the other part of the cuff. It's also been stitched, the seam trimmed off, and pressed open. Here is the part that I do want to show you. The joining of these two sections at the outer edge. We'll turn one section right side out and slip it down into the section that has not been turned. Match seam lines and pin.
and then stitch. Here's another place where I don't think you need to watch me all the way. So here is a cuff. It's been stitched and the seams layered. And then we're going to press the seam so the interfacing side will be up. From this point on, I'll show you each of the steps, but I won't take time to complete any of them. This step will help hold the edge of your cuff in place. I'm going to stitch this seam down to the under part of the cuff. I'll put a pin in so that you can see about where it's going to be stitched. We can stitch it better from the right side. Next time, I'll complete the blouse unit by joining the cuff to the sleeve and setting the sleeve into the blouse.